Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I know you're all tired and you're ready to go, so we will be very short. I mean, the major objective is to, uh, first of all, thank you, everybody, those who have participated, and especially the panelists, for the work and the contribution they have made to this meeting. I just want to say five, four or five elements. You know, I think uh, it was said before that we were, we were doing a Christmas tree. In a lot of ways, it's true. But I think we have to distinguish between issues where we have said we need to discuss and to do studies, you know, where we have to do, where we, th we should be brought. And then where we want to, the G20 to take decisions, and there we need to have small steps that are doable. And I think we have identified quite a few of them, and they are covering basically issues such as transparency and monitoring, which is clearly a WTO position, to set up principles concerning how negotiations are done outside WTO, to explore new developments. And I think one of the elements that we have not discussed enough, but which is very important, is the communication to the outside world. People do no longer believe that globalization is good for them. And I think we need to change, and it was mentioned once or twice, the way we are communicating to the outside world what we are doing. We are not talking anymore about liberalization. We are talking about integration. And I think this is a very difficult issue for many countries. It's no help when the economists say that, on average, everybody gains if I lose my job. A steel worker in, in, uh, in Pennsylvania does not care that globalization has helped to create 10 billionaires in San Francisco. So I think we have to show that uh, these issues are taken seriously. And I think, as somebody has mentioned, we have not to speak about jobs, uh, about maintaining jobs, but to give people's possibilities to have jobs and to help them to do that. And I think this communication is very important, because our problem in Geneva is not Geneva. Our problem in, in Geneva is that our capitals are no longer willing to, do, to make concessions and to move forward. And as long as they, we cannot convince them that it's good, we will not advance here and we are wasting our time. So I hope that we all work on the communication and to go on. Thank you very much for your cooperation. It's a really a great day. Uh, we have today 21 panelists representing their arguments and ideas, uh, and also, you know, are representing uh, nine, 19 different, different uh, think tanks all over the world. Apart from uh, uh, that, we had, uh, you know, very good discussions. Uh, I don't want to uh, summarize what we have already discussed. Uh, and I prepared three key words, three key words uh, for for the uh, you know uh, closing remarks. But uh, you know, because of uh, because of uh, the constraint of time, we we have already run off our time behind schedule. Uh, so I I condensed the three three key words into one. That is, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would like to take the, this opportunity to uh, extend my uh, gratitude to everyone in this meeting room. Uh, it's your contribution to this event, to this uh, conference, a really a success. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in the uh, uh, opening remarks, uh, your valuable uh, ideas, your valuable uh, policy recommenda recommendations will be uh, incorporated into the report that is going to be delivered to the uh, Sherpa meeting, to the meeting of uh, finance ministers, the meeting of uh, commerce ministers, 
and uh, the meeting of uh, uh, Central Bank <laughs> Governors meetings of G20. Uh, on behalf of the three Chinese organi org organizers, I once again thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Shang, and thank you all for staying. I think that uh, those of you that have remained in the room should get something in your way out uh, for, <laughs> for being so good and staying way beh behind uh, the time. But I think I, I agree with you and I agree with Nicola. This has been a very good day uh, in terms of, uh, of the ideas that we have uh, uh, put forward that we have discussed here. Um, I had the intention of summarizing in a more concrete way, but I won't, I won't do that. Let me just say um, perhaps um, uh, two things to complement. One is uh, a reflection on the role that we as think tanks have, and therefore the T20 in policy generally, but particularly in global policy. Uh, I think that um, negotiators, government officials, uh, those that craft the, the frameworks that we are concerned about, uh, they need to be politically wise, pragmatic, uh, uh, think about the viability of what they're doing, and, uh, and obviously um, probably battle against skepticism and cynicism so that things can move forward. Our role is a bit different. We need to be ambitious. We need to make sure that the high ideals that we have as uh, societies uh, are transmitted to those policymakers. We need to make sure that we keep them on account uh, of an, or an, an accountable to what they promise. Otherwise, uh, it would be a futile exercise. The T20 was created back in the um, early times of uh, days of the G20, of the current G20, uh, with uh, specifically that idea uh, that by providing analysis state of the of state of the art um, data uh, knowing that the policymakers count with the support of igos uh, but that it would be necessary to hear from independent voices uh, we could uh, bring to the table something uh, additional and that I, that addition i think is better served by again keeping um, both uh, those high ideals present, as well as making sure that the, the leaders are accountable uh, on the promises that they make. So as, as ministers go in Shanghai in, in July to the trade uh, ministerial meeting, they have a number of uh, issues that they do have to agree to, hopefully, and transmit them to the, to the leaders' meeting uh, later in September. I think. Um, here, uh, again, without going into details, we have at least uh, reiterated uh, very strongly and loudly that we're concerned about uh, the, um, uh, the state of growth um, of the global economy, um, the, issue, the issue of the disparity of that growth, uh, the, uh, how many of the risks and vulnerabilities of the global economy persist, and how many of those have to do with the lack of coordination of microeconomic, fiscal, and other policies, including trade and investment, among uh, the major economies. And so I think that that's a message that has to come out uh, uh, again loud. Um, the G20 leaders have repeatedly made commitments uh, to guard against uh, protectionism and to facilitate and support uh, growth. And again, trade and investment is very integral to that. This year, this is, is particularly interesting because China has taken that step to materialize what was decided in Antalya to create a permanent forum to discuss trade and investment uh, within the G20. It has proposed that, that, that this trade and investment working group now becomes again this permanent future and that the trade ministers continue to meet and review these issues. And I think that it would be very important for the T20 to come on support of that proposal uh, this year. So coupled to that, back in Brisbane in 2000, uh, what was that, 13, um, 
leaders also uh, promise to target an additional growth of 2% to the global economy. And, and th this is not going very well. They also, back since 2009, have promised to guard against protectionism and to continue um, to actually uh, enact uh, very actively the, the measures to guard, uh, again, uh, that protectionism, to continue commitments on standstill and, uh, and rollback. And we haven't seen much of that as we have heard now today. So we need to, again, on that, on that question, come out very loud with a message from the T20 that this is a concern, that we have to make sure that economic nationalism, protectionism, uh, is addressed, and that it is addressed from a political perspective. As Nicholas Mbodin has been saying, inclusion is the, is, is the, is the key word here. Uh, inclusion both uh, in terms of the global uh, trade and investment architecture, as well as uh, social inclusion and the connection between the trade and investment frameworks and, and those aspirations of social inclusion uh, in uh, economies all around the world. So again, I could go down a number of the other issues that were uh, said today, but I'd like to just close by saying that we have to make sure that we, as independent think tanks, uh, keep in mind that we do have a very different role from what governments and intergovernmental organizations have as a role, and that that role uh, asks from us that in this declaration that we will send to the G20, we keep particularly those high ideals that we have uh, very clear in mind. So thank you all very much for contributing to that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone. So our uh, 2011 to 20 Trade and Investment Conference have been successfully finished. Thank you very much. Well, one, one last word, please. Uh, help me thank also our colleagues, Shui Hua Sheng, Yang Dong, and the, the people that put all this conference together. Thank you yeah. all. To thank, all. You. thank you. Thank you.